on the September 2024 What's Neat. We go to the St. Louis RPM meet. In this video, we show 10 or 12 different interviews from that show, from small companies, big companies, companies that might not even ever get exposure, but make amazing products, as you will soon discover. The What's Neat Show is sponsored by Lombard Hobbies, your value hobby shop for over 40 years of modelers helping modelers. Big inventory, value pricing, fast shipping, and great service. And by Broadway Limited Imports, the cutting edge leader in model trains. Check out their website at broadway-limited.com. And by Bachman Trains. Now that's the way to run a railroad. Check out their website at bachmantrains.com. And thank you for helping us support the best hobby in the world. This is What's Neat for September 2024. I'm your host, Ken Patterson, and this month we've got a neat show in that we go to the St. Louis RPM meet that took place not too long ago here in town. And it was an absolutely magnificent show with a record of attendance of 950 folks, plus all the vendors. In this video, we show 10 or 12 different interviews from that show, from small companies, big companies, companies that might not even ever get exposure, but make amazing products, as you will soon discover. Also this month, Tyler Haney from Bachman Industries comes by and gives us an update on the mid-year new product announcements. A lot of neat stuff, including an open auto rack, a very early early prototype, which my buddy got all excited about when he heard about this model coming out from Bachman. Also, I am out here presently doing a photo shoot of some beautiful Broadway Limited Canadian Pacific GP35 locomotive right here. And I wanted to talk about this engine because A, it's absolutely specific to the detail that Canadian Pacific had, including the bell that you see hanging on the front of the hood. I've shot some photographs of this outside and the model looks absolutely amazing in sunlight. They are very accurate models in the fact that they are making now road specific details for each type of model that they're producing. Not limited to, but truck side frames, dynamic brake hatches, all the various types of details that you would see in the fans, long hoods, short hoods, bell types, location of the bell, horn types, location of the horns. They've made all kinds of lots of research in order to get these models accurate. The lighting is amazing unto itself, as is the Paragon 4 sound system that they've put in it. I do remember shooting a Southern Pacific engine, which I've got out here as well today. And what I was impressed with with this model was the lighting. Check this video clip out of the lighting effect shot inside on the indoor layout. Just an absolutely amazing treat. So check these out at the Broadway Limited website, broadwaylimitedimports.com. Also, as you can see, I've got a What's Neat This Week, our brand new box car out here. This is an absolutely an amazing model. I'd love to see people weather these and see how these turn out. Uh, this is available. I will put the flyer on the screen right now. Samson RC Hobby, check it out. And I did shoot this box car outside. Absolutely beautiful in outdoor sunlight, as you can see on video, but the outdoor photos, you know, they're just set up just right to look good. So with that said, I do want to also mention to be sure to check out the What's Neat This Week video podcast that we shoot down here every Saturday night, keeping you updated on what's new in this, the best hobby in the world, with our podcast crew, special guests, and always a lot of new products every week keeping you updated on what's going on in this, our hobby. And so with that, let's continue on with the rest of this September, an hour and a half long show, September 2024, What's Neat? <laughs> For this
is what's neat. We're at the 17th annual RPM meet here in St. Louis for 2024. And I'm standing here with our wonderful podcast crew for the What's Neat show. Hey, everybody. I'm not going to introduce everybody. You already know who we are. Yeah. But I know one thing. They're looking around to spend money because there are so many amazing models here. And the 3D companies, there's so many new 3D companies. And the models keep getting better. And there's a lot of new manufacturers. I cannot believe all the new faces that I'm meeting and yep. interacting with. It's great. There's more people here every year. Yep, that's very true. Yep. Oh, it's phenomenal. Can't wait to go buy some models. Did you buy anything yet? I've already bought some stuff. Yes, I have. What'd you get? A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. That way. <laughs> yeah. Those Illinois Central cars over there. Who yeah. makes that? Class One Railroad. Yes. That looks yes. pretty neat. Are, the new Tangent yeah. models are out. Oh, there. the Tangent. Tangent cars. Cars. So many oh, you bought it? That. Yeah, I bought three of these. All right, guys. Yeah. You know, this is the best hobby in the world, and that's part of it is the pleasure that it brings everybody. And we don't have to decal and paint this stuff I know. anymore. I know. And we got an hour Mike, set up for yeah. you. How well we know the days of painting and decaling. Yeah, I know. I've got all these at home that I did the old Robbins Rails cars, and I did them just like this, but they'll still never be as good as this. That's right. Never. All right, so stay tuned, enjoy, grab some coffee. We are going to do interviews, a lot of new manufacturers this year, an absolutely beautiful end scale layout. This is going to be a fun show to do. It, will, it sure it is. Be. Yep. Starting now. Now. That's right. <laughs> Perfect. That's great. Hey everybody, today we're here with uh, David Lelbach from Tangent Models and uh, I've long admired Dave for his uh, passion and, and his drive to make his dream come true. I, you know, I read a little bit about him and how he you know, dreamed about this all through school and reminded me of myself because I was always drawing trains in, in, in you know, class and everything. But uh, anyway, do you want to tell us a little more about the, how this came about? Sure, yeah. I mean, Tangent started in 2007. Um, I grew up in New Jersey along the Conrail, Lehigh Valley Main Line. Um, my dad took me out west a bunch of times to see different things out west. And um, I worked at the Isaac Walton Inn and Marias Pass in Montana, mm -hmm. which is like on the BN Main Line. When I was in college, I worked there and waited tables and uh, got got to really get the, the feeling of real railroading, you know. And uh, all during that time, I was building models. And um, I got to know some prote modelers uh, in Chicagoland. And, and you know, I realized it's like, why aren't our models really looking like really good? They could look a lot better. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was kind of my quest with Tangent was to do really high quality freight cars. We're not doing locomotives, as everybody knows. Um, we do freight cars and now cabooses. Uh, we're on our fifth caboose now. And really, you know, we're trying to hit the niches of the market that aren't being hit. And um, you know, just do the things that I think need to be done that are missing in the hobby. So I have a real passion for HO scale. Sorry, I have a real passion for real one-to-one -one freight cars, mm -hmm. just like you do. Right. And uh, you know, I I'm looking for those holes. And like that 86-foot box car right. that, that you love so much. Yes. Is one of our holes, and our yeah. new 60-foot cars are holes that we're filling. Right. Yeah. That 86-foot uh, car. I've I've got I don't know how many, probably close to 20 of yours. Nice. But the 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 uh, underframe are all road name specific the you know the cushioning devices and couplers everything is just uh, it's just it blows me away how how true to prototype you are with your models yeah and those those Greenville boxcars you're talking about the 86 footers we have 14 different builds for them mm -hmm. so we have like seven different bodies 14 different possible builds from those bodies wow. there, there's an incredible amount of work that we've put into those products yeah. and um, you know that labor love continues on with our new yeah. stuff probably uh, more of those to come too maybe huh yeah we have not finished them Mike that's a great point we have not released all of the different versions that we have yet. yeah so okay. we have more 86 footers to do okay so yeah was, we're, we're busy yeah. well tell us about these 60 foot auto, auto parts cars yeah so we have two different 60 foot auto parts cars that we've done recently the first one is our um, Greenville Auto Parts box cars, which 
um, are your, the old Robbins rails. Right, are you right. That? Mm -hmm. We've talked about those in the past. Yes. Um, and there's two different versions of them uh, in terms of the body. The, there's a narrow truck spacing, which is like the, car, right. the, the early. Robbins rail car, mm -hmm. uh, early cars. Right. right. And then the later cars had widespread wheel, uh, wheelbase. So we've modeled both of those, offer both of those. Again, many versions of our products are available. Uh, mm -hmm. We do them with and without the roof walks on the top, uh, run, sorry, running boards on the top, cut down ladders, cut down uh, brake appliances, yes. whatever. We, lowered, so we, yeah. yeah, the lower lowered brake wheel. Yeah, just yeah. Like the stuff that you like to do when right. you build your models. Mm -hmm. right? So we do all that, and then um, you know we've just recently also pivoted to another 60-foot product, which are our most recently released, the Thrall 60-foot design yes. car. Yes, inset panels on each side of the door. That's right. Right. That's right. Yeah, the, the Thrall trademark. Yes. Yeah. So this is like the Thrall late version of their cars, which has the trademark panels. So right. Yeah, we're really excited about this one. Again, multiple versions. Our website talks about that. There's two principal versions um, in the design with different brake systems. So, yeah. Man. Well, uh, your stuff is amazing. I've got your cabooses, I, I, you know, all your hoppers, covered hoppers. I, you know, I got several of each thing, and so I plan on continuing to buy your stuff, and I, I thank you for bringing it to market. Well, thanks a lot, Mike. I know this is your first interview, so we have to point that out, yeah. and this is great news. <laughs> thanks. Mike's doing interview now. All right. It is, it is cool. Like, for a freight car guy like Mike to come over here, it means a lot. Like, I've been very inspired by your work for years, your weathering work, your kit bashing work, you know, your your huge scale and small scale yeah. stuff. You're all over the place, which is great. I think it's fantastic because like an artist. You're a true artist. Wow, I really appreciate that, yeah. man. From from one nut to another. I know, I know. <laughs> I know, it's like a real geek fest. Yeah. Here. But uh, anyway, I just wanted to say, um, you know, to the to the nation of what's neat this week, the Ken Patterson Show, um, as I call it. Um, thanks for all your viewership and for all the people that support Tangent, including Mike. Thank you for your business. Um, Tangent is a family-owned and operated business. We have three full-time employees um, besides myself, and uh, you know we do this as a labor of love. We bring okay. these models to people as a labor of love. We support brick-and-mortar hobby shops. A lot of people don't still understand that after how many years of being in business. Yeah. So anyway, we were founded in 2007, and we're here to stay. We got a lot of great things planned, and we're on our fifth caboose today. All so right. That's our big release for this. What's show. your uh, website? Website: www.tangentscalemodels.com. everyone, you know who I am, but again, let me introduce myself. Dino Coombs is What's Neat This Week, and today we got a new company called ScaleSigns.com by Thomas Graza. So Thomas, welcome to the RPM Meet. Tell us a little bit about your company. Garza. Garza. Yes. Um, tell me about my company. Well, I actually started the company in 1995, and uh, it was called Scale Sign or Mich Michigan Scale Signs back then, but then I joined the Army, and uh, so I took a little break, retired from the Army about five years ago and um, got back into my trains because I was retired and, um, and I'm like you know what I love I miss making my signs so I took today's technology which was different from 15 years ago and applied it to what I still remembered from back then and so it was easier to make the signs and I came up with what I got right now and uh, um, the 3d printing has helped out with getting the fine detail that I really wanted my signs prototypical signs was what I was really shooting for. Um, I started this the company because I had a friend, Kenny Cook, who had a layout in his basement. And he, it was a huge layout. And there was some parts that um, had some scenery. And one night I was looking, and I'm like, what can make this look better? And we like our models looking real. Right. I'm like, I'm missing some signs. And at the time, I actually was working for an electronic free press output bureau, big word, 
but we worked with photographs in making film to go to press to make magazines. So we had these processes to make proofs because some of these magazines want their colors to be correct. Of course. Well, that proofing system helped me make these true colored signs. Now, what was cool about this proofing system is that the material was shiny on the front, which is what real signs were. And because of this thickness, I was able to paint the back of it silver to simulate aluminum. So I was actually able to make a realistic looking sign. Because the signs at the time, back in 95, were paper. And, um, and then I used uh, a company that made a T-shaped pole that was just, I think it was like 3 sixteenths of a, of, a, of a, real super tiny, and it was T-shaped. And I needed something that was T, not a toothpick. Mm -hmm. So I used that, it was a little on the expensive side, but I needed to be as close to realism as possible, because that's what I wanted. That's what most someone modelers want. Right. So that's where I came up and have what I have right now. So I can have the glare on the front, the aluminum on the back, and a nice shape pole. Yeah. Now I see all these detailed signs. Uh, tell me anything that's brand new coming out or what you already got out here. Well, actually, today at, the, at, the, um, at this show, um, I brought out, I'm expanding the O scale. The O scale now I'm working on to get it to the same size as the HO. I'm actually going to kind of start something. We're going to have like N scale November and O scale October. Nice. And bring that stuff out. So I just came up with these O scales. Um, it's like a nice cross buck you got here? Yes. So I have a couple different cross bucks. And so what I did is I actually made these poles that actually has the bolt and washer on the back. So you get that better look than a piece of wood that doesn't have any detail on the back. And then um, I also designed the channel pole, which has holes right through it so the yeah. sun can these go through These are see-through, these are not etched guys. And then I actually put the bolts. I, I redesigned these signs so that I could take the bolts in its spacing so that when I create these, when I create these, um, the bolts line up. It, detail is very important, just like it is to any other modeler. Gotcha. So, yeah, so I just brought out the HO, I mean the O scale, and they're doing really good, and I'm really happy with uh, the feedback I'm getting from customers, and I'm glad to help out the O scale. I really, the O scale, which is, um, everybody loves HO, you know, that's the most popular scale right. that there is, right. but I'm trying to also help the N scalers and the O scalers to give them the variety they need to continue bringing the models up and helping out everybody. Right. Well, I appreciate your time here at the RPM, and hopefully you're having a fun time. I appreciate you giving Great me a rundown of your products, and definitely look them up, scalesigns.com. I'm actually looking here on my right for uh, reference here. But go ahead, check them out again, scalesigns.com, correct? Yep, we have an awesome website. Everything is there, and if I don't got it, you email me, we make it right there and then. I got you. All right, well, thank you, Thomas, very much for your time. I told you this is going to be a fun show. You can't believe it. I've got Jim, I got Joe, I got Matt, I got George. Look at this. What a group, guys. Tell me what you think about the RPM meet. There's a lot of manufacturers that have come to it, and you're all here. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I, I would say this is probably one of the best train show type shows in the Midwest. Okay. Yeah. I'd actually say it's probably one of the best train shows, period. Uh, and part of the reason I say that is because here it's very focused on trains and the people who come to the show are very focused on trains. Now it's got the RPM moniker on it, but people think my RPM means the serious guys, the rivet counter, stuff like that. Yes, yeah. they're here too. Yes. But you know what? You don't have to be a rivet counter to be here. They're everybody's skill level. I mean, I'm here. <laughs> Do you know what the best part of the show is? Seeing everybody's work back there. Because yeah. like you said, it's accessible. Anybody can bring their work and show it off and get new ideas from other modelers. It's modeler's show for modelers. Yep. Yes. What it's do you think? A, it's a great it's a great opportunity for people to see uh, what, like you said, what modelers have done, get inspiration, and uh, then go over here, see, them, see the manufacturers, see what we have, and uh, get inspiration on uh, what to buy to then turn into what you want for your railroad. One thing about the show, it appears, is that it's intimate in that you're not smogged with 20,000 people right. in two days, so you can have a conversation. Is that what you say? Yeah, and I like the fact that even with the vendors, you know, you, you go to the National Train Show and you got 
booths that look like something from Las Vegas. Right. You know? Yes. And here, everybody's... You, so you have one of those. We do, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody's level playing field, vendors have tables, the modelers have tables, and it, it's more like uh, hometown. That's awesome. Show. Well, look at all the cool stuff you have here. There's a lot of 3D printing stuff going on around the world right now. Oh, it's all new, right all the new stuff. There's yes, a lot sir. of cool stuff. I mean, I've bought a bunch of 3D printing for some of the models. I've got on my table over here that I, I think you've shown or we're about to show. Um, but some of those vendors are here. And so I can show people, look, this is what I did. And then, hey, go over there and buy it. And they're like, wow, and they're all right here. And that's why I say I love these shows. I'm having fun. I'm getting paid to be here, and you know what? There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Our buddy Matt Herman. Uh huh. He's, he's over there selling entire locomotive. He okay? He's got shells out there on display, yep. right? He yep. says they're gonna have finished engines painted with motors in them. All yep. of it. Yeah, 3D so, printed. It's that's, amazing. That's all new. That's crazy. Yeah. Imagine the startup production costs, the savings. So yeah. Crazy. This is how we do a podcast with yes. these. I know, right? <laughs> anyway, this is a segue. Let's go check out some more great interviews. For this segment, I'm with Bill Denton. We've met Bill before because you built that amazing N scale <laughs> city with all the buildings that we've featured in the last two years on What's Neat. Yes. But Bill, you're standing in this amazing layout in N scale, and it's the most realistic layout and I've had more people tell me to come over and look at this layout. It makes N-Scale look like something you want to do. Tell us about this amazing layout. First, what's the name of it? Thanks, Ken. Uh, this is uh, the N-Scale Modutrack layout, and we've been together for about 20 years. We're not a club, we're just a bunch of friends that got together, and three of us started it, and as more of our friends joined us, we kept adding more and more modules, and Today we're here with, uh, somebody told me we had 73 modules in the layout today. It's a lot. And we fit in a space about 60 by 35 feet, I think it is. So that's like um, 600 feet of track. It, it, it's long. It takes the, a train about 40 minutes to circumnavigate the layout. <laughs> wow. Now the scenery is realistic. It's not a circus here and a tornado scene over there. There's continuity telling me, how did you do that without a fight? Well, that, that kind of just happened on its own. I started, <laughs> I started with uh, New Lisbon, which is a town on the Milwaukee Road between the Twin Cities and Chicago. And I rode there on the train as a kid. So I built a model of it. And then other guys came into the group uh, and wanted to build modules. They just kind of naturally fell in line and started adding more prototype Milwaukee Road Towns, and this is what we ended up with. <laughs> it looks good. Now this appears to be Thanks. Code 55 track, so everything's proto as scale as you can really do for N-Scale. But tell me, we've seen N-Scale evolve since you guys have started this club even. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, everything, uh, scenery materials, DCC, you name it, rolling stock, it's it's just gotten better. It, it's, and uh, yeah, it's, that's amazing. Awesome. Tell us about, I want to say what's your favorite scene, but there's so many scenes on the layout. Boy, yeah, it'd be, I'd be hard pressed to pick one. I'm, my personal favorite right now is Grand Crossing, uh, but that's a new module I've been working on, uh, which is outside La Crosse, Wisconsin, which started by one of our other members, Jim, and uh, I took over the project, and uh, it's, it's, it's almost finished. We're that's getting there. Awesome. That's absolutely awesome. Uh, there's nothing really to say. The height of the layout, you guys have built it so that you can see it. Uh, we used to do that. I've done that with a club layout at one time. And it was always something where the children couldn't see it. But if you look yeah. at the finite detail that you have, this isn't really a child's layout. Yeah, and we take a little heat from that at some train shows. Yes. Not necessarily uh, the prototype modelers. No. They really enjoy it because, like us, Having end scale up in your face really shows off the details and what you can do. So that's why we, we chose this height. Well, you guys are taken down, Bill, because we're almost coming on the end of this one. But thank you very much for the few minutes and this gorgeous work of art. Thanks, Ken. <laughs>
Hi everybody, we're here today with Dana Stratton from 3D Model Designs. And uh, I've known Dana for a good six years now. He's been coming to the RPM each year and uh, with all his 3D printed stuff. And it keeps getting bigger and bigger each year, the amount of stuff you're into vehicles now and yeah. all kinds of stuff. So yeah. you want to tell us a little bit about your well, business? And I started you know? out with uh, maintenance away vehicles basically and, and building them basically by hand. Mm -hmm. And then bought my first uh, 3D printer, started making the beds and then started expanding. And now I'm up to uh, probably four or five hundred individual designs, and uh, uh, emergency ambulance, uh, maintenance of way, oil field, heavy haul, uh, yeah, quite a bit of stuff. Yeah, truck and parts, chassis, exactly. and wheels, and tires. And then I'm a detail kind of guy anyway. Yeah. So as it went on, I realized I needed more detail parts. So welders, compressors, hand tools small cranes, light stands, mm -hmm. everything, you know, just if you look at a work site, there's everything right, there. So right. I decided, well, I need to model that. Yeah. This is about everything that you would need. And what better way to do it than doing it yourself? Yeah, you know? exactly. And I figured if I liked something, then the model modeler would probably like it. Plus, I have people all the time who come to me and say, hey, can you make this and can you yeah. make that? And sometimes it's uh, maybe, but most of the time it's, yeah, give me a couple hours. Yeah. And I'll jump Man. in on my computer and draw it all up and print it up overnight the next day I have it for me. So, yeah, it's been very, very interesting, very, very fun. Yeah. And quite an experience. Yeah. Fun. As I remember, you were one of the pioneers, like one of the first guys to jump into this mm -hmm. uh, that I saw each year yeah. at the show. And yeah, thank you. Yeah, I did. And you see more and more uh, the 3D oh, yeah. printers in here right. this year. Uh, not too many of us are doing vehicles, but different niches within right, the market, right. which is great because yeah. it doesn't flood the market. Mm -hmm. Everybody has different ideas, and uh, so it's the 3D printing is getting big. It's already big, and it's getting much bigger it's all getting, the time. And better and yeah. better. The quality yes. is getting better and better. You know, so. I, I tend to buy new printers sometimes as many as two or three years. Yeah, the new stuff comes in and better technology faster better resolution mm -hmm. uh, better this everything better about it so i tend to get rid of the old stuff and bring in the brand new stuff right. and the difference has just been amazing if you look at some of the oh yeah the uh, quality of yeah. your prints i mean yeah. the vehicles you make and like the truck frames and all that stuff it's just yeah. it's 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 almost as smooth as injection yeah. molded plastic and, and that's what i'm going for you know mm -hmm. like when i've done the new pickup trucks I mean, they are smooth as yes. glass. They are just beautiful. And when you look at them, you know, you don't see any lines. Right. You see all the detail and everything, but no lines. And, you know, I can offer vehicles that nobody else can, can do, sure. you know, as far as the big companies. I right. I can do individual yeah. you know, gears and individual styles. And it would cost the big companies hundreds of thousands of dollars to, to tool do, something. Yeah, to yeah. tool one make, right. model maybe. And I can, a lot of times, like I said, I can have it in a couple of days. Great. Well, there you go, uh, Dana Stratton with 3D Model Designs. Yeah, you're just on Facebook, right? I'm just right? on Facebook, yeah. I, I prefer the personal touch of someone uh, messaging me, and, mm -hmm. and they'll say, hey, I'm looking for maybe maintenance away stuff, and then I can kind of lead them and help them you know, understand what I've got and uh, understand from them what they would like to have. Okay. So it makes it more of a one-on-one -on -one experience. So is that is it 3D Model Designs? Is that your Facebook huh? page on title? Facebook. Yeah, okay. On Facebook. So. All right. Let Big D build your custom models. I'm with Ben Wang from Aurora Models, a new company only four years old in our industry. As you'll recall, he came out with the locomotive that we were all talking about on the show with a fan spun. 
and I just found out how he did that. Ben, it's awesome to have you on the What's Neat show. Yeah. Your Great models are here. amazing. Please tell us about your passion for this hobby. Yeah, so I got my first HO scale training set when I was nine years old, and I've been hooked since. And when, in my late 20s, I realized if I wanted really nice model trains, I had to get involved in manufacturing them. So here I am now after about four years. Yeah. Uh, we are Aurora Miniatures, a uh, company located in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, where I basically make model trains. And uh, I figure out what to make and when to make it, and then I have a whole team of people that help me, you know, achieve what I want to do. <laughs> Your models, it seems like you really strive for the details, and, yeah. I, and I, I know that word is so overused, but you were just talking to me about the research that you do. Yes, uh, so I handle the research for every single locomotive and freight car that's released to the North American market. And that's, I basically go, I'll do a lot of work on getting the, the you know, like you said, getting the details correct and getting all the variations for freight cars where you have like different sides and different doors, different roofs and different, most important all, different underbody details. Yeah. So I'm going to shoot B-roll and show each car as you talk about yes. them. But you you have presented us for the show with this beautiful uh, pink box car. Yeah, and you told me a few minutes ago, in your opinion, it's the most detailed car. And you've got some of those over here. Tell us about those two cars that yeah, you have. Yeah, it is. Um, because we, we spent, I spent a lot of time, I personally spent a lot of time getting the underbody details and all the variations on the roof and all the variations on the sides and ends. And we're able to do every single variation of that car. So uh, the 2004 version of the F-Box has a different roof and has different doors and has a different underframe compared okay. to the 2016 version. So the pink box car is actually a 2004 version and that's different from the earlier uh, production that we did, which was the 2016 version. So you can buy cars from both runs and they'll have different details and then you can add it to your collection and that's, that's, I think that's, that's really important. That's fabulous. Yeah. Now, we were talking about the locomotive here where the fans spin. Tell us about this model. Yeah, so this is our GMD ST6, uh, ST50F, sorry. Uh, ST50F, this is our second locomotive. And it's visually very similar to the ST60F, but we made some improvements to the locomotive. So now the radiator fans are individually controlled. Uh, so instead of one motor driving all the fans at the same speed, you have three different motors and then you can have just one of the fans spin, and then you can have all three of them spinning at the same time. And it's all controlled by the uh, digital command uh, control sound decoder. That's amazing. Now at this show, you're talking about a brand new well car that you're coming yeah. out with, and it looks like it's made of metal. Tell yeah. us about that. Yeah, so this is our uh, uh, Gunderson 53-foot all-purpose well car. And then this car is, uh, this is our first uh, die cast uh, a metal alloy card. The reason is Here, you want keep talking and hold that. I want to look at it. Yeah, the reason the reason we went we went with a metal material is this car is so it's so low and small, right? And and then if you do it in plastic and you try to run it empty, it's going to have uh, your tracking weight, problems. Your weight, you've got your yep. weight, and you said this rides really close to the rails. It does, which is why you have to use metal because if you use plastic, it's too light, and you have a. Uh, you have issues when you run at you run at high speeds. This is beautiful. I, I guess a multitude of various uh, paint schemes are going to come on this car. Yeah. So the first run, we're going to make um, TTX, obviously DTTX. We're also going to do Florida East Coast in two different colors, uh, in red and also yellow. Nice. Yeah. That's going to be well received. Mm -hmm. And then you said you had a bigger box car here. Uh, yeah, that you were showing me. Is yeah, this one? the 60 foot uh, Gunderson Greenbrier, 60 foot uh, cubic foot capacity is 7,550. So this car is released, which means you can purchase them from dealers today. And we have, I think, seven different paint schemes. That's absolutely amazing. Yeah. I can't wait to see what you guys come out with next, but so far this is just beautiful. Yeah. And only four years, four years. Yes. In, well, in, so. in four years we released uh, one HO scale locomotive, uh, two different types of HO scale containers, and three HO scale freight cars. And we have over 10 other freight cars in development, in different stages of development. Wow. And we have at least 
at least three more locomotives in active de development. So, yeah. That's there'll awesome, be, Ben. There'll be a lot of awesome things to come in this the future. This is the best hobby in the world, and it's because of what people like you, Ben, do. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, everybody, today we're here with Bob Johnson from uh, Master Built Models. Now, I've known Bob for 20 years at least, and uh, we've always had this common interest of cars in different scales. And uh, why don't you talk a little bit about how you came into getting into this business and well, stuff? Well, like we, like we talked about, uh, we both kind of had a common start mm -hmm. with uh, slot cars from the 1960s. Mm -hmm. Uh, scale model trucks from AMT in the 1970s. Right. And then uh, the AMT plastic a annual model models yeah, every yeah. year. Yeah. And then uh, HO scale railroading after that. Right. So all of that has kind of culminated into a passion of mine for uh, supplying vehicles for the discriminating modelers. Right. Uh, now fire trucks. Uh, trucks from the 80s, mm -hmm. uh, 70s, 60s, and 90s, right. and automobiles of various vintages right. from about 1950 through 2020. Mm -hmm. So we've got some of everything now. Uh, the quality is outstanding on the PCX87. Uh, Rakina yeah. quality is just outstanding. And we're fortunate that they're uh, bringing out so many American models Absolutely. lately instead of just European stuff. And, uh, and uh, most of that has been in the last 10 years. Right, right. Uh, and a lot of it in the last five or six. Mm -hmm. So we're really lucky to have so many great models uh, that are just extremely well done. And and they keep cranking them out, too. These uh, Burkina and PCX87, especially every out, month they bring something maybe out. Maybe 10 or 12, yeah. 15 models a year, yeah. different models. Amazing. So we're, we are very lucky. Yeah. And well, uh, what kind of, what's your website? People uh, it's want to Masterbuilt order. Models. Okay. M-A-S-T-E-R-B-I-L-T okay. models.com. Uh, we have everything on the website. And we usually are the first to have the newest releases from Burkina uh, and PCX87. We buy it directly from the distributor mm -hmm. in uh, Germany. So we're usually the first guys to have them. And then I'm usually one of the first guys to have them after you get them. You get samples as quickly as I can get them in the man, mail. Man, I appreciate it, man. <laughs> I, I love the stuff I get from you. So. A package a package arriving from Masterville Models is a surprise yes, every time. Isn't yes, it? <laughs> it is. I never know what I'm going to get, but it's always good. Yeah, always All right. great stuff. Well, thank you a lot, Josh. Oh, Bob. Thank you, Mike. All right. See you, see you around. Thanks, thanks for coming to this show. It's really oh, great. Thank you. All right. It's great to have a good show this good yeah. in St. Louis. All right. Thanks a lot. See you guys. Bye, guys.
I'm here with uh, Kevin Tolley of uh, Southern Tier Grain Modelers Supply. Now, uh, Kevin, I've been observing your stuff on Facebook for some time, and I know you've been featured on some very prominent layouts uh, for deal with detailing elevator parts. Uh, you guys are from Chicago, correct? Yeah, I'm, I'm not originally from Chicago, but that's where I live now. Okay. And uh, you were telling me about, uh, about your inspirations, that some of the earlier models were lacking in detail. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, kits that various manufacturers have put out over the years for grain elevators and for feed mills, but uh, typically, and, and, and probably because they just didn't have room in the box or that was going to make the price inordinate or whatever, they really kind of just focused on the building. Uh, and then the details that were on the outside of the building were pretty rudimentary. And uh, I definitely thought, well, most of the elevators, a lot of them started out that way. They were very simple, but they got added on to as business picked up, like right. after World War II. And uh, th th those details needed to be added. And there was no real grain bin supply in the, in the industry either, so. Yeah. And I've noticed now that you have uh, several of these, uh, several of these uh, kits that started as Walther's kits. You have the feed mill uh, over in this direction that you've added tons of grain bins to. Uh, the uh, I think the ADM elevator that you've also added green bins to. I did, yeah. It was uh, they're a good they're good starter points, and um, and that's the thing with me. I don't want to uh, give someone um, an entire kit. There's other people that make really nice kits. Unfortunately, American Model Builders is gone, but they made some beautiful uh, feed mill and elevator kits. Um, and uh, you can buy my accessories and put all the things on that kind of make the scene interesting, which is to me is all the busy work of the grain elevator, uh, the, the uh, rather the bucket elevators and the grain legs and all the bins and the ground augers and things like that. Yeah, and you and you supply it all, like from the uh, from the fall guards uh, to the ele to the elevator legs that many uh, facilities would have added on. Oh, totally. Yeah, the, you, you see many uh, older elevators. A lot of people don't realize that inside of the the, um, the, the wooden elevators that many of the manufacturers sell, inside of there is a bucket elevator, but a lot of those parts were wooden or they were yeah. cast iron and they wore out. And as they would do that, instead of repairing the thing, a lot of times what they would do is um, they would gut it and put in a modern steel bucket elevator and just run it straight out the roof yeah. and, and feed the outside bins. It's very common to see that. It's in, in the cement elevators too, it's very common to see that. And now I've noticed you have a variety of silos as well. You have a stave silo over there as well as your new product, the Harvest Store. Yeah, the Harvest Store we've had out for about a year and a half. Um, they're, they're very detail-oriented parts. The, uh, the decals that you are supplied with it are accurate to what would be supplied with the, with the Harvest Store when you purchased it. And um, the big thing is, is that they're, they're all from dimensional drawings. So one of the things that I differentiate my company from, from some others maybe is that uh, if you see something from me, either from Southern Tier Grain or from Steel Mollar Supply, 99% um, of the time it's from a legit factory print. Oh, that's that's awesome. Now, what's your website if people are wanting to order for you? You can go to Tully Models. It's T-U-L-L-Y, TullyModels.com, and then you either select, uh, I, I offer a modeling service where I'll build an elevator or a steel mill for you, um, or you select from uh, Steel Mill Modeler Supply or Southern Tier Grain for whichever modeling style you have. Okay, excellent. Once again, this is Kevin Tully from, uh, uh, from the Southern Tier uh, Grain Modeler Supply. Hey everybody, today we're here with uh, Tom Orlando from HSD Models uh, here on South Detroit. I'll let you uh, clarify that, but uh, what Tom is most famous for that I know of is all of his maintenance away equipment that, that he does, and it's just amazing all the different things that you do, man. And uh, vehicles, 
three D parts and uh, racing parts for for cars. You know, we're we're both really into muscle cars, and uh, he makes a lot of three D stuff for that. So uh, why don't you go ahead and tell us about uh, what you do? Well, so I basically design and three D print all these products you see here, and uh, we started out with the maintenance away, the track maintenance stuff, and the track games, because there's not really much of it out there in, in kit form and regular form you know, models you can buy. And uh, so I decided to make my own lineup, and uh, it seems like it's going pretty well. Um, we got pretty much start to finish on a track game. And we got everything in between, like quarter potties and tool carts. And, uh, so how many pieces of equipment it, would that be in a line? Uh, well, we have 13, and we're about halfway there. I'd say wow. it, you could probably fit about 15 to 20 cars. Uh, yeah. Different separate machines inside of a Each track one game. has a different function. That's it. Every every machine does its own function and then it moves yeah. on to the next and then uh, they, they have intermediate gangs in between yeah. making sure everything goes right. I think uh, the, you know, the maintenance away department is uh, building quite, quite well. Yeah. Well, good. I'm, I'm glad to see that. I mean, uh, you brought some stuff down to our podcast, uh, made a, a trip down to visit us a few months back and we had a great time and showing off all your models and talking about cars and stuff. And it was so so uh, what kind of cars and uh, vehicles so and other stuff we did, do you we have? Brought, we brought a wide variety of cars. We have railroad high rail trucks and uh, we have heavy duty trucks. We have section trucks. I have trucks with LEDs and flashers in them. Um, I have city trucks with plows and then I have muscle cars that I have all my wheels and all my little hot rod parts that we're going to talk about next. A lot of the hot rod parts are just blowers, superchargers, air cleaners, carburetors, and things that you can see sticking out of a hood of a car that you can yeah. kind of mm -hmm. add to another car yeah. or a model and make it better. Right. Okay. So a lot of the a lot of the hot rod parts we have today built are engines on engine stands. Um, we have blocks, engine blocks. And I'm a big Chrysler yeah. guy, so I made I, I started the lineup with 440s and yeah, you and have Mopars. the engine blocks with the holes in them. At, wow. And then uh, we got some machine shop stuff, uh, bridge ports, lathes, and uh, garbage cans and dumpsters. So we got a little bit of everything here. Right. For the layout. Just a bunch of different things. wheels and slicks and stuff. So yeah, you got the. We even have rusty engine blocks. If you wanted to yeah. place some rusty engine blocks on the side of your building. And tool chests too. Yes, lots of toolboxes. So anyway, uh, well, cool, man. I I love the stuff you're doing. And Thank you. 3D printing is really coming along amazingly you know the stuff that's coming out now and available to the home guys that are willing to learn how to do it you know it's amazing not me but and it's only going to get better it's we're only right. getting more detailed and uh, okay. you, can, you can find anything you want on here at, here on south detroit model railroad company or okay. hsd on facebook i'm also on instagram at uh, super v tom or here on south detroit is that a website? Do you have a website? Uh, there, yes. The website is here on South Detroit Model Railroad Company. Okay. Dot com or uh, dot com. Yeah. Be. Okay. All right. Good deal. All right. Okay. Well, thanks for uh, talking to us. Thank you, sir. And thanks for coming down, man. No problem. All right. Great. All right. See you. Today we're here with Dan Goins, the uh, director of Texas Northern Model Railroad Club, and we're announcing a new exclusive run of the Intermountain Auto Rack in MKT colors. And uh, several people have helped with this project. Uh, our, one guy I remember, David Hyde, I know him in particular, and uh, some of the guys down in the Katy Historical Society down, down in Texas. 
but uh, extensive research is done on this, match the rack numbers to the flat car numbers, and I mean, these things are like perfect in every way. So you want to tell us a little bit about it, Dan? Sure. So we decided to have a uh, revenue project for the Texas Northern Model Railroad Club. And one of the things I suggested was, hey, let's do a custom car. We have a lot of members uh, because of the connection to the MKT area mm -hmm. um, that were MKT fans. In fact, David Hyde uh, is a member of our club. Steel Craver is a member of our club and are both very active in the MKT research. And Mr. Buddy here himself also mm -hmm. is very interested in the car and helped provide uh, the research. A few photographs, yeah. One of the unique things is, is that um, typically the, ra the railroad only owns the rack. Uh, trailer train would own the car. Mm -hmm. So to keep track of everything, they would um, have a number assigned to the rack. And we were able to photographically match uh, six car numbers with the rack numbers so that uh, the little rack number that's right up here mm -hmm. is actually accurate for that car. As far as I know, I don't think anyone else has ever done that for Yeah, uh, I've seen the numbers, but I don't know how accurate they are. And they're, they're they are rare, now, but this, I mean, boy, that's, yeah, these are perfect. We got it dead on. Yeah. Um, so we did six numbers. We did uh, a production of 300 units. This is the pre-production sample. I would say that probably within 60 days we'll have our product. Okay. We're very, very excited about how, how it turned out. We even went to the trouble of, we noticed on our photographs that the MKT logo on the uh, screen was printed. On the, we couldn't find any um, MKT logos. That right, that. right. Those were so unique. We had an artist uh, produced from the photographs mm -hmm. the artwork for the MKT letters. It looks just the way I remember. It looks perfect. So it's awesome. And we are already uh, have over 200 reservations. So with 300 units being produced, it will be a sellout. So buy it now. Right. Go to the website, which is www.texasnorthern.org. Okay. I can't wait to get mine. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. You'll remember Lauren James from last year. I think that's really the first year that we met yeah. and introduced you to How the you show. Doing? How are you today, Ken? It's awesome. This RPM meet is just it's better absolute. and better every year. I know, right? Yeah. It's good it. to see you this year. But you came out with some amazing cars last year, and we're going to do a follow-up now because now you've got some new loads for those cars. Yeah, so last year we unveiled the Trinity or the Freight Car America 54-foot bulk car. And now we're offering the pipe loads, so you can color your ends. So we offer the pipe loads, you get two and a half cars per bag. And the colors on the ends represent the threads per inch out in the field. So a simple pipe load. Yes. And if you're not modeling a modern pipe cart, you can still get a pipe load and put it in a regular gondola. It's scale pipe. No, so that's one of the first ones we've done. This is our second car. Remember the story about this one? I needed 60 of these for my layout. Yes, I do recall. Because I have one of the originating clients that sends all the pipe throughout North America. So it's like, you know, whatever I need, let's just make it, you know. That's the way it's been yeah. like in this industry for oh, yeah. so many years. Everything on this table I need for my layout. Right? Yeah. I know, right? Jack Parker just needed a couple bridges and look what it turned into that Central Valley. Jason Schro just needed a turbo and now he's got a bus, <laughs> right? I love this hobby. <laughs> All right, so you've got some interesting new paint schemes on some cars, too, that you want to talk about. And I want to talk about the car that's got your daughter's name on it. So we did the Isabel car for the 6000 So this is this guy. And uh, Ken, you got B-roll of the Izzy I'm going to shoot So this is our OVR of, yes. anniversary car we did. So on the Izzy car, it has a breast cancer ribbon, and it's road number 2017. Unfortunately, in 2017, my mom passed away after three times suffering breast cancer over a course of five years. And my daughter Isabel was born just before my mom had passed. So the car has 2017 with the name Izzy on it with my mom's initial CJ below the ribbon. 
and a portion of each card goes towards Canadian Breast Cancer Research. Wow. So if nice. you're looking to get one of the breast cancer cards, we still have a few left. That's awesome. Yeah. Now you've made some news at this show. I love it that this show is becoming a show and there's so many manufacturers here with new products. Yeah. But you've made an announcement at this show. Tell us about that amazing thing behind our back right here. Well, this was a Springfield, but we've got updates on this one. This okay. is the Point St. Charles CN Transfer Van. And we got a lot of road numbers. So, we have CN in the big red, CN in the middle, the test scheme, and we also have the museum scheme, the EYNN. So we have 22 road numbers, and we're also gonna do an unnumbered and an un undecorated set too. Very cool. Yeah, track powered, simple wand, track no decoder, power. track powered. On the caboose? Yes. So inside of its lighting? Lighting inside just for the ends. Okay. Because they were mostly like transfer cabooses. They weren't mainline. They were like short jobs, way freight. So marker lights. Okay. And then end lights. Nice. And then a little bit of interior light. Yeah. Very cool. It's an iconic Canadian piece because, again, I loved that caboose when I was a kid. So let's make it. Let's make it. What else do you really, really like? Because now we'll get an idea of what's coming out here. Uh, well, I got bigger news. Is. We are working on our first ever locomotive. Oh, but now the there funny story you know. is there's another one behind it I'm also working on too. We actually have two in design. Okay. The first one no one will ever think of. The second one will be like, yeah, I need 10. Okay, I need 10. I need 10. So is this for 2025? 2025, we'll be unveiling the first loco and the end of 25, probably the NMRA show in Novi, the Motor City. Think about what Lauren could be offering across the lake, because you know, I live in Ontario. What could it be? It's amazing to me, and we see this now, how many model companies that are making models for the US market that are from Canada. Yeah. So the first model, I know the company that is the retailer and the wholesaler. So that'll make you think about what the locomotive actually it's, is. It's who it's who we meet at these shows and who you know. That's how you get ahead in this well, industry. Some of my friends who work for NSC, I went to university with. Okay. Wow. So he knows people. It's it's, it's that first year in the dorm room making the connections and friends for life, Ken. Simple as that. That's awesome. Yeah. Man, Joshua just keeps making me smile running camera for us. But there's one thing I want to show you that I'm super proud of, Ken. Yes. Last year you met my beautiful wife, who's very talented. Yes. So we have something brand new oh, oh, this oh, year. Oh, oh I, I know where you're going with this. I want to show you. Can I pick it up? Yes. We make homemade one by hand trash loads. Yes. And right now you got B-roll footage on the outside layout. And there's netting on top of that. It has the two lane and each load is unique and different. So you got your trash load and then you also have your construction and demolition load. Yes. And then we're working with our good friend Bernard at Mini Print. Yes. To do uh, scrap loads for baled, shredded and sheared. And right now today we got our basic, basic scrap load. From him? From him. Is yeah. it here? Yeah, it is right. Where? This? That's the painted one. Hold on. Ray. Good luck on camera on this. We're making news here. Right here. Okay. So this is a 3D. It actually is a two piece. He, did he scan? Did he scan? Wait a minute. He scanned. So stuff, I gave right? him prototype pictures. Okay. And then he kind of kind of worked it. He's oh, gonna add a. He's gonna oh, add a, oh, He wow. might add a toilet. He's talking about some other loads with me too. So two piece in. Wow. Now, again, my beautiful wife, who is extremely talented, frantically weathered and painted one the night before I left, Ken. Yes. You know, bless her heart. Yes. And yeah. And then with these is you can either lay it in or do a simple basic foam like we did on the trash loads to give it that raise up. All right, so what does everybody go to find these amazing products? You can find them at our website at www.ovrtrains.com. You can license on Facebook at OVR Trains or on YouTube, or you might even hear me on a podcast like Around the Layout, AML, yes. you name it, or okay. on Trackside Mike Show, 
who was my best buddy, came down. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. This is like a family reunion every year. We love it. Well, listen, thank you very much, yeah. Lauren. And we can't wait to find out what those locomotives are going to be. And I got a new tradition for St. Louis. Uh -oh. Every year, I'm going to bring a meter stick, and it's going to show how much Isabel's grown at every after <laughs> every show. I think that's a good idea, Kat. Yes. Idea. Yeah, we had that in the house. We have a meter <laughs> stick. The old line of the farmhouse, yeah. There you go. Yeah. I'm here with Dan Notley from Yelton Models. Dan, tell me about your company. Okay, so the company started back in 2017, and the company name came about simply, it's my last name backwards. And the reason for that is my darling wife, we have a sign up in the living room. The sign is made of all different shapes. She just read it backwards, so how about that? And I said, you know, it was good enough for Walt Disney, so it's good enough for us. So one of Walt's earlier companies was his name backwards. So that's how we ended up with that. So. Interesting. Now I notice a couple of your newer models. Facebook has been, been a buzz with them. Looks like you have a uh, silver combine here. Yeah, so we have a combine that's loosely modeled after a Gleaner R66. And I've also got uh, a couple of foragers that we've done and some silage wagons. These are all uh, new that the farm modeling is a big hole we see and we're trying to fill that hole as best we can now as the day's gone on it turns out i'm going to have to do some earlier versions of these things as well but we're getting there now you were telling me earlier about the story about how you made this uh made this combine all the photographs and stuff that you took yeah. so the the combine itself uh there's a farm local to me he's about maybe a five minute drive away my wife noticed the the combine out in the field and one day she came out this is really cool you got to go see this so we go back later in the day the combines in action we're on the field taking pictures of some of the other equipment that we've modeled recently there's a little silage wagon here as well and the farmer literally came over to just inspect that we weren't vandalizing his property struck up a conversation fantastic gentleman we got all kinds of history about him the farm and the combine and he offered to me. He said, look, I'll tell you what, I'll park it here tomorrow morning. You want to come take all the pictures you like? No problem. True to his word, there it was. So on a Monday morning, two Mondays ago now, I went and took you know, three dozen pictures and by Tuesday, that model was done. <laughs> Wow, so it's a couple days prog progress and or project, and you were telling me uh, that you can model just about anything folks want you to if they have photos, is that correct? Absolutely. Um, what I need really is a couple of good photos of a, of a thing. One decent measurement helps, more is better, and, and obviously the more information you give me, the easier this is to do. But I have literally taken two photographs and created some fairly complex things, so it's something we offer. All right, well, this was uh, Dan Notley from Yelton Models, then this is James Regeer. And the website, what's your website? Uh, YeltonModels.com, or the email is YeltonModels at Outlook.com. Please come. Yeah, all right, that's for what's neat. So standing next to me on both sides, I got Nick's Trains, Nick Santo. How you doing, Nick? Good. Thank you. And then JT Burke from Scale Sound Systems. How you doing? 
All right, so first we're going to start with Nick. Nick, tell us what you got going on here. Well, thanks, Daniel. This is this is a new addition to the Dakota Buddy line. I wanted to announce it here at the show. The show is wonderful. We love being here. This is a great place to do it. We've had great people. What this does is ties up with soundtracks, decoders. This one ties up with low sound decoders. And if you want to know more about my product, the Decoder Buddies, it's www.nixtrains.com. And then I finally learned how to spell. It's N-I-X-T-R-A-I-N-Z. Enjoy. Yep. All right, Nick, looks like you got a great product. Of course, I've been using a couple of your products, and thank you for bringing us on the decoder market. Now, we'll move over to the right of me. Now, JT, you are the master behind the sound. Tell me a little bit about your company and what you do for the DCC market. Yeah, so uh, I'm an audio engineer by trade, by profession, uh, about 30 years of systems designs. Um, and engineering and when I became a, well I've always been a model rarity so when I got into model train sound uh, I didn't like the speakers so I designed a speaker that I thought was better and uh, while I was at it I decided to make them drop in OEM drop in so if you've got an Atherin or an Atlas or whatever you can take the stock speaker out and mine will screw back in place without modifying anything or if you've got an older model that never was supposed to have sound, my speaker will snap in and, and we've got Nick's board right there. And So like these old Atlas Classic models that were full of weight, you can pop our products in without milling any weight out. Yeah. It looks phenomenal. Now I personally have both used both your guys' products and Nick, you make the 21 pin installs easy. JT with your speakers, a phenomenal sound. The Soundtracks Equalizer allows you to get a deeper bass tone. Um, which really amplifies the sound of the model. But like JT said, and I've personally done installations where, like he said, on an Atlas or even an old uh, Proto 2000, like I guess this one, for example, to where he said he can custom make the speaker baffles to fit in OE specs. This is a small connector board. Notice this uh, shell is separated from the frame. That's the way it can happen at your, uh, on your layout also. It's a nice feature of it. Yeah. I see it's very easy now, except the Atherns where you're used to the wires connecting. It makes uh, basically maintenance in the breeze. You just pull off on your motherboard, and then you're good to go to fix it. Yep. So, All right. Well, thank you, gentlemen, both for your time. Yeah, Shake both you. of your hands. Yeah. All right, JT. Thanks, Nick, Daniel. Thank you very much. Good to see you again. And that's this segment here. for What's Neat. Two days of the best hobby in the world, and look at this, we're all still smiling. Uh, Mike, yeah. you've got a great big smile on your face. Tell me about all the amazing stuff we saw at this year's show. A lot of new products, tangent models, and uh, some decals from Dan Kohlberg. Uh, a lot of stuff, a lot of 3D printed stuff. You did some interviews too. Yes, I did. That's so awesome, Joshua. I got scanned again, and this time I have arms. It's going to be great. <laughs> I got scanned again, Daniel. Speaking of scan, I got scanned with one of my locomotive wrenches, too. A wrench. A wrench. What do you think, James? Do you sell models or buy models? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it, uh, it's great. Got this uh, great new Gleaner combine. Got a couple uh, hopper cars. That'll, that I'm going to have to weather, so yeah. We have seen, like Mike said, so much 3D printing at the show. It's absolutely amazing. Brand new startup companies and the quality, the full-size shells, there's, there's, it's, there's no end in what you can do. Yep. So that's the biggest revolution that we've seen. A lot of manufacturers here this year. This show is broken. It's attendance record at this show. It's an all-time record attendance. Stay tuned to the What's Neat podcast where you're going to be able to watch everything about this show as well. And so that's going to be this segment of What's Neat. Come to St. Louis next year. And that's absolutely right. Yes. July 25th. Yeah, 25th, 26th, something like that. Have a good one, guys. All right. <laughs> For this segment of What's Neat, I'm with Tyler Haney from beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania at Bachman Industries. Hey, Tyler. Hey, Ken. How are you doing? I'm awesome. You are going to tell us about all the new exciting stuff for this month of September. That's right. Happy to be on What's Neat again. 
And this is going to be a, a special episode uh, this month that we're going over the Bachman uh, mid-year announcements that we uh, unveiled at the National Train Show in Long Beach, California. Nice. And on the cover, uh, with a uh, Ken Patterson photo, uh, you know, just a beautiful shot that we had to bring back as we're reintroducing our biggest HO steam locomotive we've ever made, the Baltimore and Ohio 2884 EM1 class making its grand return. Yay. My yeah. very first weathering video I did with that locomotive, we created a lot of beautiful images when that first came out. That is a gorgeous, gorgeous piece of work. It really is. It's been uh, long overdue to make its return uh, to our Spectrum line. For the first time, it's going to have pre-installed DCC sound with the Soundtrack Tsunami 2 package. It's a little bit difficult to show it off here. Uh, you know, I really do need both hands, but you can see. I got pictures I can put on the screen. They're beautiful. This is the first run I'm showing you. Yes, and I'm showing the first run as well. But, uh, you know, it's got all that beautiful separately applied uh, boiler piping and handrails and all the details you've come to expect from a Bachman Spectrum locomotive. We'll have four row numbers in this release, two with the uh, early uh, build configuration with the larger uh, sand dome up front and two with the later uh, later run of this uh, locomotive when it came out of the Baldwin loco locomotive works with the small sand dome. And it's a uh, locomotive that unfortunately did not survive to the present day, but it can come back to life on your HO scale model railroad. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so perfect. Yeah, we knew, uh, we're glad to hear that you're excited. We, we've been hearing a lot from a lot of modelers who are happy to see it back. Uh, as we're going through the rest of the brochure here, uh, don't have samples for everything in the brochure to show on the, share on the show today, but we, uh, I'll go over them briefly. Our uh, HO scale GP38-2, uh, we're doing another run of those with the DCC sound value package. Uh, first time with uh, Economy decoders, and we've got a new licensee in that release. Uh, the Long Island Railroad, courtesy of the uh, MTA, uh, an officially licensed product from them, as well as BNSF, CSX, Union Pacific. Moving into freight cars, we've got one that I wanted to bring up because uh, Matt, when he was visiting you, Ken, for the uh, St. Louis Railroad Prototype Milers meet, he uh, told me about a conversation you had had with him about how you'd love to see somebody bring back a uh, yes. more detailed version of the old Tyco Auto Carrier. Yes. And here it is from Bachman, uh, the 52-foot auto carrier representing an early uh, experimental car that was converted from a regular flat car. It'll come with four sedans on board that you can uh, remove. Uh, just a, a very cool car, and yes. uh, it was just very ironic timing that you uh, you must have been reading our minds with what we had planned. Oh, I've been thinking about this for like 30 years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ever since I see Mike Buddy uh, take one and actually make it look prototypically accurate with beautiful cars on it, um, mm -hmm. it's quite a little gem when you've got that small of a package holding four to six cars. Absolutely. Gives, uh, you know, gives the modelers out there as well who have uh, smaller layouts with tighter curves who want to have an auto carrier but can't fit the big modern 89-foot ones to have something a little more smaller and, you know, represent an, represents an earlier era as well. That's cool. No, as soon, yeah. as, as soon as we're done with this interview, I'll have to call Mike Buddy and tell him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he'll get a kick out of that for sure. Uh, on the... Uh, bottom of the page for you of the brochure, we've got the 52-foot center beam flat car, which we've had for a couple of years. Uh, we're going to be uh, offering it for the first time with a lumber load included, a wrapped load of lumber. Uh, four row names for those with the appropriate uh, lumber company on it. We've got Bennett Lumber, Canadian National, Northern Pacific, and Union Pacific. And then moving on into passenger cars, we've got some cool announcements here. Uh, our first run of the Siemens Venture cars, which came out earlier this year, uh, I'm holding up now the yes. uh, Amtrak Midwest uh, coach class car, uh, the single unit. And we're offering the next two body styles for the Amtrak Midwest cars, uh, making up the married pairs that are semi-permanently coupled together. We'll have the uh, coach class and the business class, two row numbers of each. These cars are designed to be semi-permanently coupled together but uh, we'll be selling them individually so you can uh, build up your Amtrak Midwest consist at your own pace. Yes. Got engineering samples for both of those buried paired cars right here. 
And in addition to the Amtrak Midwest cars, we've got the highly requested Amtrak San Joaquin's cars. Uh, four row numbers for those of the coach class San Joaquin's cars operating out in the California Bay Area. Nice. Moving on uh, to the next page, uh, going from the very modern passenger cars to very early ones, we've got the 1900s era 60 foot passenger car. You can kind of, uh, if you're looking at the brochure on our website, and Ken, maybe you'll have this up on screen. Oh, I will. Uh, yes. You can see in the background the very popular Strasburg uh, Railroad uh, with the beautifully uh, restored woodside passenger cars, which are going to be the inspiration for this model. Uh, two uh, wood body passenger cars with open platforms, uh, two road numbers for each of the four road names. We've got Strasburg, Pennsylvania, New York Central and Hudson River, uh, Southern Pacific. Uh, don't have an image ready for those to show yet, but I'm sure you'll be seeing them on what's neat in the coming months. Nice. And then finally, uh, rounding out our HO skill announcements, we've got the return of the uh, McKinley Explorer train set, which has been very popular fixture of our transit line for many years, uh, featuring the latest paint scheme for Holland America lines on the Colorado Rail, rail Car Dome cars and a modern paint scheme Alaska Railroad Jeep before it's match. Uh, a little bit of a personal uh, story. Uh, McKinley Explorer was the first HO scale train set and the first Bachman train set I received uh, for Christmas when I was two years old back in 1999, the original version. I was a little bit young for it, uh, me and my brother, so it ended up being my dad was mostly playing with it. But still, it's a uh, bit of a, uh, has a little bit of a uh, nostalgic uh, personal appeal there. So it's very cool to work on the latest version of that set. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Run through quickly, uh, rounding out our HO section, we have some Thomas and Friends announcements, which I'm sure uh, Doug Bling will be telling you about uh, in a future episode. We've got two new locomotives, uh, Sydney and the Mainland Diesel. We've got some new rolling stock, a flat wagon with diesel fuel uh, drums. We've got a tar tank car, and we've got a china clay wagon. Got some new accessories from our friends at Proses, uh, a motorized drawbridge, uh, mini bar clamps for assembling uh, building kits as you're gluing them together. Some 1950s billboard kits with some very cool artwork and a uh, two-stall uh, steam era engine house. Uh, Pros is, uh, not everyone may know, uh, they are laser cut kits primarily that are uh, designed and made in Turkey and Bachman is proud to be the exclusive uh, distributor for their uh, wide range of accessories. That's awesome, Tyler. Yeah, we're real happy to work with them. Moving on into N scale, we've got another highly requested uh, locomotive making its return, and that's the N scale GE 44 ton switcher. Okay. Uh, you know, one of the uh, already smallest prototype locomotives, bringing it into the small scale. Uh, we were very proud to bring that out uh, back in the late 2000s, and now it's making its return for a second run with some new paint schemes Burlington, Pennsylvania, Santa Fe, Western Maryland, covering a uh, wide uh, range of geographic re uh, regions, and it's been highly requested. Uh, has DCC on board, which is another, you know, impressive technical accomplishment to not only get this thing running, but to put a DCC decoder in there. Very cool. Very, mm -hmm. very cool. Yeah. That's we a small package. That is such a small package to be able to work inside of. Exactly. Got some returning rolling stock and N-scale as well. Uh, we've got the 250-ton steam crane and boob tender, which is being upgraded with a more realistic rower, lowered ride height on the boom car and body-mounted easy-made couplers on both the crane and the boom. Four road names for those, Maintenance of Way, Pennsylvania, Santa Fe, and Union Pacific. Uh, we also have our old-time passenger cars making their return, also with body-mounted couplers. Uh, the coach, the combine, and a brand new baggage car. Four road names for those as well. Baltimore okay. and Ohio, Pennsylvania, Central Pacific, and Union Pacific. Rounding it out with a couple of N-scale announcements. Uh, for Thomas and Friends, uh, we've got Henry, uh, another very fan favorite character, much requested. Uh, for some rolling stock, we've got Hannah, the coach, uh, sister to Henrietta, okay. and a 20-ton uh, brake van to uh, round out your Thomas and Friends freight trains. 
And we've got a uh, all new N scale roundhouse building kit uh, designed to perfectly fit our N scale easy track turntable. Another uh, popular request. That's awesome. That's a lot of products. It is, yeah. We've also got a, a lot of new announcements in Owen 30. Uh, we know you Owen 30 folks have been uh, asking for some new announcements, and we've got a couple for you. I'm going to step back for a moment here and grab something off of our. Uh, conference room display here just to show you folks. Yes. The uh, 14 ton two truck Heisler is uh, returning uh, to the L130 line. Uh, one of our, you know, very finely detailed logging and mining locomotives with a real working drivetrain, just like the prototype, as you can see there. Again, this is a, a previous uh, production run just to show you for illustrative purposes. We've got some. Uh, Brand new prototypical road names for the Heisler, uh, various lumbing and lumber and mining companies, as well as a painted unlettered black with various detail parts to customize for your own railroad. And that will have for the first time Tsunami 2 uh, pre-installed. Nice. That's amazing. Yeah, the ON30 is just such a great scale. You could pack a lot of train into a small space and it's still 148 scale. Absolutely, and with all kinds of, you know, spectrum quality, fine scale detail as well. We've also got uh, two uh, new rolling stock items, which are variations on existing products, uh, offering something a little bit new. Uh, we have the animated stock car, which we've done previously in HO, N scale, large scale. It's a little bit different from what we've offered in Owen 30 in the past. Uh, it's a little bit whimsical, we'll admit that. But we've seen whimsical Owen 30 layouts before, you know, we've seen tropical island layouts, we've seen Christmas layouts. This is kind of in that vein. Uh, we think it'll be a big hit as well, you know, with uh, families and kids at train shows. Uh, so for the Owen 30 animated stock car, we'll have free animal options. Uh, we've got the Rio Grande with the cattle bobbing their heads in and out of the car as it moves around the track. We've got two cars with horses, a uh, painted unlettered oxide red and the Colorado and Southern. And of course, you got to have a Christmas car, the North Pole and Southern Reindeer Transport. Nice. And then finally, uh, we've got something very practical. We've got the O130 track cleaning tank car uh, with our very, uh, you know, very successful, very useful uh, dry cleaning system that is attached to the car and makes cleaning your tracks as easy as possible. We've got four road names for this, the Durango and Silverton uh, and White Pass and Yukon. A very distinctive, uh, you know, blue car that was a lot of fun to do the artwork for, as well as painted and lettered silver and black cars. That's really cool. That's a lot of stuff. You've covered HO scale, you've covered ON30 and N scale. That's right. And we are not quite done yet. We're going to round things out with large scale to finish off this new product announcements brochure. Our newest large scale, uh, one to 29 scale freight car, uh, complementing our Dash 9 and GP40 locomotives, yes. is the two bay offset hopper with a removable co-load. This was a uh, AAR standard design uh, that was uh, introduced in the 1930s and just about any railroad that had any kind of coal hauling business may have had these. We've got uh, Baltimore and Ohio, Southern and Santa Fe as the road names with two different uh, road numbers uh, for each, as well as a painted and lettered black to add your own railroad to. Yes, good. And finally, we've got some accessories, and I'm going to move my camera back here because these are major accessories that just, you know, very, you know, imposing in size. So hopefully that's going to show up on camera all right. Oh, nice. A Here is our... Uh, Large scale station platform kit. Uh, this will come as a kit. We assembled it uh, for to show in the brochure and to show you here on what's neat. We've got the station platform, and we also have the covered bridge. Here's your covered bridge. Nice. Which has a space inside uh, to fit your large scale track between the bridge timbers. So adding uh, adding some. Uh, scenery variety uh, to your large scale layout. And then we also have the Christmas cross bucks, uh, perfect for your, uh, if you're running your large scale train under the tree to add some festive flair. That's really cool. That's a lot of products, Tyler. Absolutely. It's uh, a lot to throw out there. It gives a little bit of something for everyone. It's always fun to uh, 
release the uh, mid-year announcements brochure in time with the uh, national train show, the NMRA convention, and see you know what what gets people excited. And thank you, Ken, for having me on to show the show it off to you. No, it's always awesome. Awesome to have you, Tyler. And so with that, that rounds up this September's video, and that is this segment for What's Neat. All of the products seen on this episode of What's Neat are available from Lombard Hobbies in Lombard, Illinois, or order online at LombardHobby.com. And by Broadway Limited Imports, the cutting-edge leader in model trains. Check out their website at Broadway-Limited.com. Bachman Trains. Now that's the way to run a railroad. Check out their website at BachmanTrains.com.